Hi, this is Tom Salemi from Device Talks. We're going to be covering the surgical robotics space uh, in a great deal at, at Device Talks Boston on May 1st and 2nd. We're going to be talking about a, a lot of high-level issues, but we're going to be able to focus on some of the leaders in the space as well. And we're going to be doing that today. I'm very happy to be joined by Rajit Kamal, who is Vice President and General Manager of Robotic Surgical Technologies at Medtronic. Rajit, thanks for joining us uh, on this discussion. It's a pleasure to be with you today, Tom. Thank you for having me. Oh, great to have Medtronic uh, have such a, a role at Device Talks Boston. You folks, I know, are neighbors of the of the conference. You're a few blocks away, so uh, looking forward to uh, to having uh, your folks there and also having you giving our closing keynote, where you'll be uh, giving a demonstration of the remote connectivity of the Hugo system. So uh, lots to lots of to see at Device Talks Boston, and thanks again, Medtronic, for being such a, such a big part of it. Absolutely, and you should come and visit our office, Tom. We are, you know, stones throw distance from the convention center. <laughs> I, I, I am counting on that. That is going to be an exciting part of my, of my three days there. So, uh, let's go step back, and, and uh, we, we like to build a conference around the the, the notion of, of finding solutions for some of healthcare's biggest problems. What's the problem that you've identified that Medtronic has identified uh, in the healthcare system? that surgical robotics and Hugo in particular is, uh, well, let's talk about the problem first, that you're trying to solve. What 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 can uh, Hugo improve upon? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, think about robotics in general, Tom, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think about the penetration of robotics, it's about 5%. So 95% of the procedures today that could use a robotic solution are not using that. 60% of those are open procedures. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a significant opportunity. The question we have to ask is, so what's the benefit of robotics over say laparoscopy, right? And there are a few things I will highlight. So if you if you look at a traditional laparoscopy, it is done using a 2D image. So surgeon uses a 2D image, we don't have the depth perception. They use a straight instrument. Ergonomically, it is not the best for the surgeon. You know, with robotics, you get a magnified 3D vision. You have a much better vision of the surgical field. Mm -hmm. You have wristed instruments, you know, that basically works you know, based on what you do with your normal normal arm. So uh, that makes maneuvering around tissue structures easier. Uh, with robotics, you can also bring AI-driven features. Uh, you can add AI-driven features, whether it is anatomic structure identification, bringing intraoperative insights. So I think robotics, I, I always give an analogy of a car, right? 15 years back, I drove a car that didn't have GPS, no sensors, nothing. Today, I'm the same driver, mm -hmm. but now I have a car that tells me if I'm changing a lane, it flashes and says, oh, there's a car in your blind spot, right? Um, so it makes me, I think my outcomes ultimately would be better in terms of driving. I take the same analogy, uh, and I think robotics will have better experience for the surgeons, and I truly believe with all the features of better visualization, wristed instruments, AI-driven features will lead to better outcome for patients as well. You're, you're... And and that's how we are, you know, that's why we are interested. We are a leader in surgery. This is where surgery is headed, and that's why we are interested in this space. That's great. Uh, your car analogy hits home. I just was I rented a car, and I'm driving a newer car, and I was able to do so many things with my hand still on the wheel because of the, the current uh, systems, a lot better than the older car I'm driving, so I can totally connect. So let's talk a bit about Hugo in particular. What, what functionality are you offering that's going to advance these procedures and to provide as you said, all of that assistance uh, that that surgeons and, and, and physicians currently don't have. Yeah, absolutely. So let me just give you a quick background on Hugo, right? So Please. Hugo is a multi-port soft tissue robot. Uh, we have an open surgeon console, four modular arms, uh, internally developed at Medtronic, Legacy Covidian. We did the first procedure with Hugo in June of 2021. It was a prostatectomy case that we did in Chile. Since then, Tom, we have come a long way. We are now in five continents. We are in over 20 countries around the world. Mm -hmm. um, and we have indications, broader indications, in markets like Europe, Australia, Japan, India, South America. We have indications for urology, gynecology, general surgery. We have now done thousands of procedures. You know, We are doing prostatectomies, hysterectomies, nephrectomies, cystectomy, bariatric surgery, hernia repair. Um, you know, U.S. is the market we are still working on getting access to. Uh, we have now over 50 publications, Tom, um, and the feedback has been very encouraging. And I will share some of the feedback that we are hearing from the field. You know, first is surgeons are saying in terms of procedural time and outcomes, 
uh, Hugo is very similar uh, to the system we have in the market, mm -hmm. the systems we have in the market. So whatever is the soft tissue robotic benchmark, we are performing at par in terms of procedural time and outcomes. But there are three areas where they think we are differentiating. So one is the open surgeon console. Um, and surgeons highlight multiple benefits of that. One is the ergonomic benefit. You know, if you are in an open surgeon console, you're setting up right, right? Instead of, um, you know, bending to look look into an immersive console. Mm -hmm. And that has ergonomic benefit for surgeons, especially those who do longer procedures. If you're doing a four or five hour procedure, um, you know, having an open surgeon console with a better ergonomic posture makes a big difference. In fact, one of the surgeons who does cystectomies, these are five, six hour cases, told me he chooses Hugo for himself, not for the patient, but for himself, mm -hmm. because it is a better experience for him. Open Surgeon Console also enables better collaboration because you can see the OR team. Um, and I think, you know, many laparoscopic surgeons tell me that's how they are used to operating, you know, engaging, looking at their, uh, uh, their OR staff. So I think Open Surgeon Console drives better collaboration. The third thing is it is better for training. You can now have the residents observe what you're doing, you know, both your hand movements and what you're doing in the surgical field simultaneously. Um, they talk about the benefits of the modular arms. I think, you know, modularity enables Hugo to go into ORs of different shapes and sizes because it is a modular system. You can bring in fewer arms if you're doing a simpler procedure. So you can optimize the footprint in the OR. A lot of surgeons say who are laparoscopic surgeons. And if you think about 95% of the surgeons or surgeries that are not being done robotically, these are robotically, we call them robotically novice or naive surgeons. For them, the transition from laparoscopy to robotics is easier with a modular arm because it provides you flexibility in terms of port placement, in terms of docking. Um, the third area where we are hearing is our DS1 system, uh, which is through our touch surgery enterprise. So every time you finish a Hugo procedure, and if you have a DS1 system, you can access the video within a minute of completing the surgery. Wow. It automatically segments the video. Uh, surgeons are using that for presentation, for training. Um, and we are actually going to use some of that video. Uh, you know, through our touch surgery enterprise, we have the largest surgical video of any, any, any company. And we are going to use that as a training data to bring AI-driven features onto Hugo. So these are some of the feedback that we are getting, Tom, but you know, as I said, user experience, ergonomic, dock placement, flexibility, all these are the benefits that Hugo has brought to the table. Help me understand a bit more about the open surgery concept. What, how does that differ from what is currently available? You're standing upright, I imagine. Are you in some kind of booth? Or what, what position is a surgeon, is, could, a surgeon in? Because I, I agree, I imagine one of the bigger barriers is just making sure the surgeons are comfortable and, and can intuitively take over, uh, uh, perform the procedure as opposed to learning a whole new platform and getting into positions that maybe they don't want to be in. So today there are two forms of console. So one is an immersive console where a surgeon is looking into a, a, a hole or a chamber. So you are immersed, so you can't see anything outside, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we have an open surgeon console. So that means you are sitting, you wear a 3D glasses, okay. right? But you are, you're not in a, you know, you're not immersed in a, in a hole, right? You are actually open. So you can look around, you can see your OR, uh, so those are the two different form factors that we have. Uh, the, the market leader has an immersive surgeon console. Uh, you know, some of the newer systems, you know, obviously we have an open surgeon console. Uh, so those are the two form factors you have in terms of surgeon console that are used in soft tissue robotics. That makes perfect sense. Final question, what are some of the things we can look forward to uh, news coming fr from Hugo? What, what's next? Look, there are multiple things that we are working on. I will highlight a few things for you, Tom, right? So first thing is, you know, we are working very actively to bring our advanced instruments onto Hugo. So as you know, Medtronic is known for its stapling. It's known for Ligasure, which is our energy device. And these are clinically proven systems that are uh, instruments that surgeons trust in laparoscopic surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working very actively to bring them onto Hugo. So, so that's one we are looking at. The second area of focus is to get into the US market. You know, we announced uh, that we started our IDE in December of 2022. Uh, urology is the first indication. We publicly announced uh, that hernia. We just got approval for ID for hernia. Uh, so we are actively working on completing those and bringing the Hugo system um, onto the US market. 
Uh, the third, as I mentioned, is to bring AI-driven features. We are working with our touch surgery enterprise in, in trying to leverage the data we have there to bring AI-driven features, whether it is an atomic structure identification, bringing interoperative insights uh, to complement the Hugo platform. Um, and the fourth thing I would say is we continue to make sure we have a differentiated training offering. Uh, we have partnered with you know, uh, uh, institutions around the world, uh, and that's another area we continue to make improvements uh, to make sure that our training program is robust and, and differentiated. So those are the four broad areas, I would say, uh, that as a Hugo team, we are focused on. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to hearing much more at Device Talks Boston. Once again, thanks for being a, a big part of the program. And Rajiv Kamel, thanks for joining us uh, today to talk about Hugo. Thank you so much, Tom, and looking forward to seeing you at Device Talks. Thank you so much.